Hello, and we're back, and here's another five terrible TV shows as mentioned by you guys. Damn. Seriously. This is K9 speaking to you. I will now go to the foot of our stairs. Here we go, Doctor Who spin-off K9. This was recommended by Dan Petit7012. Thank you, Dan. K9, the series, the attempt to cash in on the Doctor Who comeback craze, got awful from what I remember. Yes, this is K9, the science fiction adventure series, which apparently immerses viewers in the thrilling exploits of the iconic robot dog from the renowned television franchise Doctor Who. However, despite its promising premise, the show met an untimely demise after just one season. K9's back was far worse than its bite, as it faced the wrath of bad reviews and lacklustre ratings. Perhaps it's a reminder that not all dogs go to heaven, some go to TV hell. Careful, you'll burn yourself. <sighs> Good day, mates. Bonjour. Hola. That's extraordinary. Yeah. Orientation protocol complete. This unit is in the city of London. Music? Ah, good. Definitely in your memory section. Can you identify the tune? Negative. Damage to mem drive during arrival through space-time machine. Too great. Right now, it's not my problem, is it? Look at that face! I've heard horrible things! In case you haven't noticed, I'm in VR detention. Hang about, this is giving me flashbacks to somewhere else, is this? He continues now on BBC One with Kathy Staff as the newly widowed Molly, no frills. No frills. This was recommended by Super Bocker, who said, Look for a 90s BBC sitcom No Frills, starring Kathy Steff, a.k.a. Nora Batty, from Last of the Summer Wine, quite simply the worst sitcom of all time. And Sun TV critic Gary Bushell hit the nail on the head when he christened it No Laughs. So this one's a sitcom starring Kathy Steff and it aired for one series of seven episodes in 1988. The show follows Molly Bickerstaff, played by Staff, as she unexpectedly moves in with her daughter Kate and granddaughter Susie in London. Set against the backdrop of North vs South England, the comedy revolves around generational differences and regional divides, but you'd probably have to be batty to enjoy it. I could study her body language, then I'll be able to tell how ill she really is. <laughs> now don't go upsetting her. There you go. Not much wrong there. All you need is a hot bath and a massage. Massage? I'll be in the news of the world. <laughs> I've read about those places. If I were you, I'd have a sauna. Oh no. I know all about them too. <laughs> Saunas. Sitting in a wooden box with a lot of Swedes. They don't have tops to the sandwiches, you know. <laughs> it can't be good for them. All that lettuce and no tops. <laughs> Trouble with Tracy. This was Prep For It. Thank you for the suggestion. Who says, I think I mentioned it a while back, but I nominate The Trouble With Tracy, a so-called Canadian comedy that was never funny, but always boring. 
Yes, it was a Canadian TV series produced by CTV for the 1970 to 1971 season, and it was intended for distribution by US-based National General Pictures. Regrettably, it's often cited as one of the worst sitcoms ever to have been made, airing weekdays at 3:30 p.m. from September the 14th, 1970, and rushed out to produce 130 episodes in a season, which led to severe budget and time constraints and resulted in cheap sets, laugh tracks, recycled radio scripts and even bloopers just not cut out or fixed. They just went straight to air because they couldn't afford to do retakes. Oh my, what a pretty dress. You do? Well, you've seen it before, haven't you? Uh, look, uh, Tracy. I'm sure you have. I mean, you were with me when I bought it. Uh, Miss oh, Anderson. Now I remember it, yeah. Is that a new dress? Yes, Sally? it is. You like it? <laughs> it's cute. Ladies! <sighs> G, 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 yeah. Garden, giant, ghosts, and gloves. That's funny, no glass. Oh, look up sand. Sand? What's that got to do with glass? Well, they make glass out of sand. Oh, that must be Tony Marshall. I recognize his ring. <laughs> oh, hi, hi Tony. Hello, Paul. Come in. Listen, I just came over to see oh, you. Oh, Tony! Here. Tony, you're just in time. <laughs> <laughs> in time for what? Paul and I were just going down to Leo's bar and grill to bet on a horse I dreamed about. Personally, I don't bet on horses. Good. A fool and his money are always parted, I always say. <laughs> well, that's what I always say, but her brother's pretty sure he can make a cleaning on this horse. Tracy, could I have some of those boiled eggs, too? Oh, sure. You know, Paul, it never ceases to amaze me how one person could put away so much food in a single setting. <laughs> Brother, it's a matter of training. It's a matter of discipline. It's a matter of concentration. And it's a matter of a 48-inch waist, give or take a foot or two. <laughs> this is ABC. That's me, Billy McGregor. I came to America from Scotland. Billy. This was MG The Strange 9098 suggested this, thank you, who says, does anybody remember an American sitcom called Billy staring one of the world's best comedians, Billy Connolly? It wasn't great. And yes, Billy was an American sitcom, a spin-off actually, of Head of the Class, and it aired on ABC in 1992. Billy Connolly starred as Billy McGregor, a Scottish teacher who relocates to Berkeley, California, marrying single mum Mary Springer, to secure his green card. Now living under Mary's strict rules and in her basement apartment, Billy navigates life in California whilst evading immigration scrutiny. Sounds rubbish. But I'd still game to watch it. Show your teenage son you love him. Go! Give him a big hug. Firm handshake! A kiss! Play catch in the front lawn! Say I love you! Give the boy some space! Spend quality oh, time with him! Oh, brilliant! And smother him completely! Oh, but I Wrong! You buy him a brand new motorcycle. That's me, Billy McGregor. I came to America from Scotland, just like Rod Stewart, until my work permit expired and I didn't know what to do. My ex-husband left me with three beautiful children and a large mortgage. And a solution? Well, it's an arrangement, actually. Maybe. And all about me. This was 63 Mackenzie who mentioned this one. What about that sitcom with Jasper Carrot and his bizarre box ticking family? I think it lasted for about 20 minutes. This one was all about me and it was a British sitcom featuring Jasper Carrot centred on a multicultural family residing in Birmingham. Airing on BBC One in 2002, the sitcom revolves around the Craddock family, based in the Midlands. It was Colin, who is a brummy builder, is married to Rupinda, and their household includes Colin's sons from a previous marriage, Rupinda's half-sister, and her children, including Raj, a wheelchair user with cerebral palsy, whose inner thoughts are conveyed through a voiceover, making him the focal point of the title, All About Me. Turns out this was more total balls than golden balls, sadly. Morning, madam. Uh, can we help you? Ah, you must be Colin. Your wife, Rupinda, told me about this place. Oh. I'll make you a profit. How much for the knob? 
He's not for sale. <laughs> no, Thicko, he's asleep. Well, I'm your daughter. <gasps> anyway, is it posh table settings or the normal? Oh, it's only Depinder Paul, he's family. <laughs> Depinder Paul? Boss! <laughs> Yo, I like my bread rings and ting. Are you still planning on being a doctor? Uh, a doctor of good vibe, maybe. You get me? Bangra hip hop. You know Punjabi styley, right? I ain't no whitey. I'm a yummy brummy. <laughs> And there you have it, there's five terrible TV shows as mentioned by you, the viewers. Please continue telling me in the comments, I'm enjoying some of these. And let me know if I've missed any out. Like the video, hit that little thumbs up button please, just takes you a fraction of a second. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and share this video with your pals and all that good YouTube-y stuff. Bye for now. <laughs>